In the previous problem, we saw a few different acids and bases. And so one of the questions that can naturally come up is, how do we know if an acid is going to be stronger or weaker than another acid? At the same time, how do we know if a particular base is going to be stronger or weaker than any other base? The figure here demonstrates that we can have relative acids and base strengths depending on where they fall on the table. The stronger the acid, for example, hydrochloric acid, the weaker is its conjugate base. So for example, HCl is a strong acid, but its conjugate base, the chloride ion, is essentially neutral. On the other hand, a weak acid will have a fairly weak base as well. But as the acid strength decreases, the base strength increases. When we refer to a strong acid, such as HCl, H2SO4, or HNO3, we refer to those species that will completely dissociate or ionize in water, leaving no undissociated acid in solution. The conjugate base of strong acids will be very weak bases. On the other hand, what we refer to as weak acids will only partially dissociate or ionize in water. At equilibrium, there will be a mixture of undissociated acid and its conjugate base. When we say a species has negligible acidity, that refers to a substance that has a hydrogen but will not donate the hydrogen ion in water. Its conjugate base will be a strong base. Another item to note is that the hydronium ion is the strongest acid that can exist at equilibrium in aqueous solution. On the other hand, the hydroxide ion is the strongest base that can exist at equilibrium in aqueous solution. If we have a table such as this given to us, we can use this table to predict the direction an acid-base equilibrium reaction will be favored. The position of the equilibrium in a hydrogen ion transfer reaction is governed by the relative abilities of the two bases to accept the hydrogen ion. In acid-base reactions, the position of the equilibrium favors the transfer of a hydrogen ion from the stronger acid to the stronger base, and they will form the weaker acid and the weaker base. This means that there will be more weak acid and weak base present at equilibrium. In this problem, we're asked to use the figure at the left to determine if each of the three equilibriums provided has an equilibrium constant that is less than 1, or lies to the left, or if the equilibrium constant will be greater than 1, or in other words, if the equilibrium lies to the right. Let's look at this first example. If we want to identify which direction the equilibrium is favored, we first have to identify the acids present. On the reactant side, we have HSO4- and CO32-. On the product side, we have SO42- and HCO3-. One conjugate acid-base pair is the HSO4- and SO42-, so the HSO4- is the acid on the reactant side. On the product side, we have SO42-, which we know is the conjugate base of HSO4, and we have HCO3-. On the product side, the HCO3- will act as the acid. Now that we know which two species are the acids on the reactant and the product side, we can compare the strengths of that two acids using the table provided. HSO4- is a relatively strong acid, whereas HCO3- is a relatively weak acid. Since we know that equilibrium favors a hydrogen being donated from the stronger acid, in this case, that means that the equilibrium favors the formation of the weaker acid, so the equilibrium favors the right, and the equilibrium constant will be greater than 1. You should now pause the video and take a few minutes to see if you can predict whether the equilibrium constant for problems B and C will be less than 1 or greater than 1. You can then restart the video and see if you got the correct answer.
By now, you should understand the relative strengths of acids and their conjugate bases. You should also be able to define strong and weak acids based on their dissociation in water. Finally, you should be able to predict the side of an equilibrium that is favored in an acid-base system based on the relative acid or base strengths present.